Hey, I'm back. Now, long-time viewers will know this was the tree I sat under five years ago for the first video I ever recorded here. Um, technically not the first, because I had one before that, before I lived here. The first I had when I lived here. But uh, I figured it'd be fitting to come back to this tree while I think about uh, essentially how my philosophy and perspective has changed over the last five years of you know being here, doing what I set out to do, all those things. And, uh, you know, this is going to be kind of off the cuff. I'm not going to edit this. I don't know how to edit these things. Um, so it's just going to be whatever it is. Um, I suppose, you know, I've wanted to cover this for a long time. And I've spent a while trying to figure out the best way to address this, essentially. And I think this topic is so complicated that I can't cover it in one video. I'm going to have to split it into a bunch of different videos because ultimately the thing I want to discuss is how to reconcile pragmatism. Now, that is how things actually are as they appear in the world, how things actually function with idealism, which is in your mind when you conceptualize how you'd like things to be. Um, essentially how you would wish things could be. Um, the blending of those two things. Because ultimately, I think... You know, I think the first point of philosophy is to prepare yourself for death. Uh, the second point of philosophy is uh, essentially the, the, the reconciliation of those two things. So you have an idealism and you have the world and you try to put them together. And philosophical systems essentially are that reconciliation. So i got a lot of people around me right now, so I apologize if uh, I get distracted. Um... I'm just thinking, so, obviously, uh, before I came here, I was a computer programmer. I hated doing that job. It was miserable. Um, just wasn't a good time. And, you know, sitting at a desk all day, you just, man wasn't meant to sit at a desk all day. It's just not good. I've never met a well-rounded person that sits at a desk all day. I just haven't. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you may argue I'm not well-rounded either, but uh, at least I'm not sitting at a desk. But uh, either way, um, I have a very negative perspective on money. I view it as a tool to get the things I want to get done done. And that's really about it. It doesn't go much further than that for me. Um, I like to use it to help other people. And I need it to exist. I mean, you need money to live. Uh, so that's really where my uh, relationship with money is... Uh, you know, full disclosure. I don't like it. I think it's evil. I think it causes people to do dumb shit. I think it causes people to value evil things. And I know it doesn't necessarily have to be that way, but I think it's not... I don't know why... Uh, one thing I've noticed with this phone is that the lighting just randomly changes. I don't know what the deal with that is. I'm not even going to pay attention to it. I'm gonna, this video is going to go off track. Um... In that way, I've never been particularly swayed by money, and that may be because I've been working for such a long time in my life. Um, I've always had access to money that I've earned. Uh, I feel like I've discussed this before in a previous video, but uh, it, it's really not a thing to me. You know, it's I can I cover my bases, and what do I have left? You know, what can I do for others? What can I, you know, develop? That's how I've always looked at money. Um, as I get older, I remember in the first video I shot on this, I talked about retirement accounts. My opinion on that has changed specifically because of how the economy has went. Um, I understand retirement accounts now because if you have uh, <laughs> uh, just a static pile of savings, uh, you know, how much how much is a dollar worth now versus how much was a dollar worth five years ago when I shot that video? Suddenly, it makes a lot more sense to me. So I can understand that, but uh, That's 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 one of the biggest things that's changed my opinion as I got older. But that was kind of you know when you're when you're a young buck. It's not saying I'm not still. Uh, I'm just getting older, older young buck. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know you don't think about that as much because you can just you know do things and your body's all you know fresh and new, and uh, you just, you don't really perceive getting older. But I'm getting to a point now where I perceive getting older. Um, not that I'm like incapable or like messed up or anything. I'm not. Uh, I'm still in, uh, I'm doing, I'm doing very well, but I, there are things I notice that I did when I was 23 that now that I'm 28, um, I have to be 
I have to be more routine. I can't just roll out of bed and uh, pound myself for 18 hours and then go back to bed and do it all over again. You know, I have to be more careful. Um, you know, it's not uh, it's not the same, <laughs> which is crazy to think about. Because I'm again, I'm not even that old. I'm only 28, and uh, I'm I'm already starting to see that kind of thing where you know it's, you get the if you get truly fatigued and you don't sleep enough, you don't get enough water. The next day you're really really fucked and I could still like I could force myself to do it it's just you know is that a good idea is that a good thing answer is no that's that we're getting off topic I get back the money okay so um when I first came here my intention was to work ass out of the camera dude uh to work as little as possible essentially to continue living and ultimately I think that is a good goal for the far future but in the immediate there is the consideration that you have only so many years where you are at your physical peak and are able to expend all of your energy and are able to do a lot of things. So, like, it's not a thing for me to wake up at 6 in the morning right now, do all the stuff I got to do here, then go to work for 8 hours and then come back and then go to sleep and then do it all over again. That's not a thing for me right now. It's not a big deal. But, you know, when I'm 40 late 30s, 40, 50, uh, that's when it starts being a big deal. And you need to, you got to make hay when the sun's shining. It's, I think that's a really good analogy of that idea. While you're young, you need to make a lot of money. You need to invest it. You need to be smart about it. Because when you're older and you aren't, you don't have as much energy, you wind a lot easier, your time is a lot more important you're going to want to not have to throw, uh, you're not going to have to work for that money. Um, so I have a retirement account set up right now, actually, um, with the place that I work. And uh, it's, it's going pretty good right now so far. I mean, it's not bad. I wish I started earlier. That's what everybody always says. Um, so that's the one piece of advice in that video that I would uh, highly uh, consider changing. Just throw a little bit at it. You know, you're not going to regret it. Um, you can always pull it out early for penalties and all that kind of thing. So I, I, would, uh, I would think about it. That's, uh, that's on you, though. Um, I just, I realize as I get older... Um, even before I'm truly like hit with, uh, the, uh, problems of getting older, I'm just realizing the potential of that. I've, you know, I've been, you know, critically ill, not critically, I've, I haven't been close to dying from being ill, but I've been ill to the point where I can't do much. You know, I've injured myself. I've, I've had a lot of, uh, things happen that, uh, have made me think about, you know, what if this happened? And I always, I always spend time, uh, reflecting on this when I'm ill or injured, you know, what if this never went away? What if I was like this for the rest of my life? And it's it's a it's a powerful thought, especially in the moment when you're sick or injured. It's like, do, like how much how much would my life change if that happened? And then you think about the fact that it's very likely that will happen to you at some point in your life you know, as you get older. You know, maybe that sickness doesn't go away. Maybe you're pneumatic, not pneumatic. <laughs> pneumatic. Uh, what am I thinking of? Uh, what is the word? You have pneumonia, and it doesn't go away. Uh, you got rheumatism, you know, arth arthritis, whatever. Um, you know, you throw out your uh, rotator cuff, it never comes back. I've done that like twice now. Uh, I'm trying to be more careful about that. Um, things like that. Those are the things you have to think about, because, you know, as you get older, that, that event could happen. You know, you could throw out your rotator cuff, and it's gone. You know, you could have a chronic illness. You could have chronic pain, things like that. And you have to think about that. That's the point, in my mind right now, long-term of making money. You know, when I came here, I only worked part-time. It was awesome. I never worked part-time in my life until I came here. I really enjoyed it. You know, you wouldn't think, <laughs> you wouldn't think, uh, you know, working one less day a week or whatever um, makes that big of a difference. But, you know, it really does. It really does. It's it's even hard. It's hard to explain unless you uh, you've done both positions and... I've done more than both. You know, I've, uh, I went from essentially working 60 hour work weeks to, uh, like 20 to 30 hour work weeks, uh, just in coming here. And it was, it was a pretty, it was pretty crazy how big of a deal it was. Um, and it's nice to have that much time, but again, I don't know how much time I'm going to have to make that money. So pragmatically, even though I'd like to have more time here, I'm in a position where I can make a lot of money. I could set myself up for retirement. I was able to buy a house for my friend and his wife so they can have more kids precisely because I'm working full-time and 
for all of those reasons, I have completely changed my perspective on employment. You need to, when you're younger, as much as is possible, make money. You need to set yourself up. You need to get things ready for when you're older. Because there will come a day when you wake out when you wake out of bed. When you get out of bed <laughs> um, and you're not going to have the strength, the energy, the potential that you had when you were in your 20s, 30s, whatever. I still have plenty of time to do that. And I've got, we've gotten plenty done in the five years that we've you know, been here. And the bottleneck, it seems to me, has always been money. Um, you know, we're not skilled enough to do a lot of the things that we need to do just by pure labor. And the amount of time that it takes to do those things, if you do them all manually, impedes on other things. And especially, um, th this would all not be a problem if we had more people helping us. But the problem is, you know, it's hard. I've talked about this in my in a previous video. It's hard to get people to commit and do things and try to, you know, see the broader perspective. You know, even though we've been doing this for five years, there's still a lot to get done. A lot of things are unfinished. A lot of things are unpolished. People still don't see it. But, you know, when I came here and it was all dilapidated and everything was grown in and, uh, you know, it was just a giant jungle, essentially, I saw what I see now. And what I look at now, I see what could be in another five, ten years, especially with the money I've got coming in. So, and that's just, and that's all talking about the personal perspective. Now, obviously, I think the point of money and how you should, you know, view money is how I can, how can I use it to better others, not just me? Because if it's all about you, why even get out of bed? You know, who gives a fuck about you? It's other people. Helping other people is the whole joy of life. It's the beauty of being a productive person. And the ultimate purpose of being a man is the ability to help others. And money is one of those things. We live in such a complex civilization that, you know, a lot of the things that I'm good at, um, with fortunately, I, I do know how to do a lot of mechanical things that I can help people with without needing to spend money. But there's a lot of things that people need that they just need money to do. And you're, there's really no way of getting around that. And, you know, if you're fit and capable as a man and you can make money um, and you can use that money to help people, to help your you know community, help your church, whatever. I think it's morally evil not to do that. Um, and I have to be careful how I say this, because I don't think it's morally evil not to make as much money as possible to help others. But I'm saying, if as a consequence of, do, of maintaining yourself, you produce a large S, which you can use to help others, that is a beautiful thing. And if you can't... If you're either too selfish that you can't use your largesse to help others, or you can't, you refuse to work um, to either support yourself um, or w for whatever reason, um, I think that is morally evil. Um, because as a productive young man, you have that ability to be, you know, useful to be able to produce something of worth, to be able to generate money. And the things you can do in the modern world with money make it worth dealing with this, you know, evil Babylonian construct that is, um, you know, Federal Reserve notes. Purely pragmatically, I think our relationship with money should be in such a way that not only do we support ourselves, that's the baseline, that's easy. What are we doing for others? You know, what about what I'm doing can go towards others, you know, and that's, that's how you remove the taint, the evil taint that is on the construct of money is taking it, taking this instrument for greed and using it to, for the betterment of others and the furthering of your own goals at the same time, because the further you develop yourself you should be on a more stable foundation to help others. And that's the biggest thing I've learned here is, you know, after taking this job full time, not only have I been able to maintain myself, which is very easy because I have very little that I need to, you know, do. Um, I, I live in a tiny cabin without, you know, electricity or running water and I love living here. It's awesome. Uh, you know, I would never, I wouldn't have it any other way. You know, after buying this house, I'm like, 
I thought to myself, you know, am I going to miss living in like a regular house with all the fixings? And it's like, nah. <laughs> it's so funny to me. The things people think they need. It's funny to me. But uh, either way, uh, it's very cheap for me to live. And I can pour out a lot of resources and money and stuff onto other people just by working a regular job. I don't even make that much money compared to what most people think that they need. And I still have plenty to give away just because I choose to live in such a way that is very cheap. And I'm very happy about that. And, uh, you know, the job I have, all things considered, really could not be much better. Very easy. I like the people that work there. It's just nice. So to wrap this all up, money is evil. If you let it control you, you're going to be, you're going to regret it. You're going to make a lot of bad fucking decisions. You're going to really fuck a lot of things over. You're going to do a lot of things you're going to regret, but we need money. We need to deal with these evil things in life and we need to redeem them. We need to take these evil systems and constructs and turn them into productive, good things. You cannot use the excuse that these things are evil to do evil things or not to participate or whatever. Our relationship with money should be, how can I make this money to make myself secure so that I can help others and you know have that large yes necessary to outpour onto others? Not just monetarily, but you got to start there. Because if you're not self-sustaining monetarily, you're not self-sustaining. You, you don't have anything. So, I hope that touched on a few points. Um, like I said, kind of rambly. I probably repeated myself a lot, but uh, that's about it. See you guys.